Hello everyone, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how I, as a chemical engineer out of college, went into software engineering. And I've been asked this by a few people now, so I figured I might as well just make a video and share how I did it and how I would recommend doing it if you are in the same boat looking to jump ship into a different industry. And so for me, if I could do this all over again and, and just, you know, being at where I was, I'd say the first thing that is most important is to really ask yourself where do you want to go in your career and then to work backwards from that and that might sound really simple or obvious um, but in my case you know oftentimes I, I see myself just learning something for the sake of learning something or you know working really hard at this job that I might not even care that much about and you know I'll ask myself like why am I doing this you know and if you don't have a clear idea or a clear vision of where it is you want to go and you know, it, you know, knowing that there's something, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for you when you get there, uh, it makes it a lot harder. And, you know, to, to back this up with like a concrete example, um, you know, my, my first ever software engineering project I did, uh, I was not a software engineer. I worked on the customer service team and it was just this thing that I felt like I could do. And I just Googled a ton of things. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and you know, just kind of hacked this thing together. And that's how a lot of people start. Um, and, you know, when I was at Amazon Web Services, a lot of my colleagues also were not computer scientists in college. Like they didn't do computer science majors or anything. They were physics or finance or whatever. Like you, you can come from any background and get into this field. I, I genuinely believe that if you are someone who is willing to learn and, and willing to put in the time to you know, really figure out where you want to go and then just think about how you can get there. And it's never going to be a clear path necessarily. And you're going to look back when you get to your end product and you're going to say like, I could have done this so many different ways. It would have made it so much easier. And that's part of the learning process. So yeah, your first iteration is not going to be the most efficient or the most practical. Um, but you know, the, the really important thing is just figuring out how to get something on paper done so that you can iterate on it and improve it. And, you know, when I was at Amazon, one of the things that they, they push really hard for people to do is get a minimum viable product out as quickly as possible. And what they mean by that is, you know, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I can make a really complex, fancy database. I can, you know, figure out a more efficient way to route API calls. I can figure out how to host this on Lambda, I can figure out how to do all these things. And it's just like, you get these things that they call scope creep and they distract you from your actual goal of, you know, just getting a, a product in the hands of a customer that can actually use it. And so it, it completely derails tons of us. And so you actively need to check in with yourself and say, am I heading in the direction I want to head in right now? And so bringing this all back to earlier, you know, as a prospective software engineer, I would strongly advise you to first figure out, you know, what company do you want to work for or what industry do you want to be involved with? You know, in my case, I was working in healthcare and then I moved to Amazon Web Services, which is just straight up tech. And then, you know, now I'm at Zillow. So, the, you know, the, the thing with tech and software engineering is that it's pretty industry agnostic. Um, but if you have a company that really kind of resonates with with or, or an industry that resonates with what you believe in or your values, um, I think it, it can kind of help give you a bit more uh of a, of a quality coming through when you're interviewing with them. So, um, those are what I'll say. And so like, if, if I could give advice to somebody looking to do this right now, uh, I would say, you know, in, in my case, I started developing web applications when I was a, uh, you know, a little customer service rep at this biotech company. Um, and for me, the, the way I went about designing this whole product in the first place was, I thought about what would a good product look like, what would a good service look like, and then how do you get there? And so in my case, you know, and just to have an actual story here, um, like we didn't have a log file analyzer. It, it just didn't exist. Our software team didn't think it needed to exist, um, but our customer service team was dealing with an ever increasing number of customer problems and, and more customers who were asking us to analyze their log files. and. The response that we were getting was that the, it was this thing that we were supposed to do manually every single time of open up a SQL file and read it. And, um, you know, for, for me, it, it really came from like understanding the customer who is going to be using this product or service that you're making 
And in my case, that's going to be people like me who are on the customer service team who have like 20 different cases right now we have to follow up with. So it's like starting with, okay, I, I know what the customer, I know what the customer is like, who's going to be using this product or service. And so what would a good product look like to them? And in my brain, I was just thinking, you know, it should be really easy to use. Like it shouldn't need much training and it should just spit out a report that tells me exactly, you know, what's wrong and, and how do I fix it? And, you know, I shouldn't need to click a bunch of buttons. I shouldn't have to type in a bunch of fields. It should just do it for me. Like I, all I need to do is upload this log file and then it should give me a log report uh, that I can understand or anyone on my team can understand with minimal training. And so, you know, just really kind of beginning to define what does good look like? Because I think that's honestly the most important thing you do in any project is you define the scope before you even get started, define the scope and know what it is you want to make uh, and, 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 and know also how is this going to be beneficial to your customers? How is it going to add value to your customer lives that they don't already have? Um, and then, you know, once you're at that point where you're like, okay, so I want some kind of application that I'm able to upload a log file into and I'll get a log report out of, how can I do that? And, you know, for me, I didn't understand web applications that well. Um, I didn't really understand Python that well either. So the, the step back from that was I was like, okay, well, what I can do right now with what I know is I can watch some YouTube videos and learn this thing called Tkinter that lets you make a little Python executable that creates a little web inter or not a, well, not a web, but a, a front end where, you know, you can have a little box where you can click on upload and you can point it to a file and then you can hit enter. And then in the back end, you'll have some Python scripts running. And so, uh, that really is kind of like that next step of like, you know, still haven't developed a or written a single line of code yet. Just how am I going to do this thing that I want to do and, um, and watching how other people do it and knowing, okay, T is a really cool tool. Um, and then, you know, saying like, how can I write some, uh, you know, flask or a uh, uh, Python scripts to open up a connection to a SQL table. And I don't know anything about SQL. So, let me just go on YouTube and watch a video on SQL and, you know, try to get familiar with like, what is a SQL query and how does it work? And, you know, what are all these characters and, and different clauses and things you can have? Um, but yeah, so like you identify that, like, you know, these, these log files are, are SQL tables. And so we have to open up a database connection somehow and I have to run queries on them. And so figuring out like, what is the exact SQL query to run here? Watching a bunch of videos to learn about SQL to figure out that. Um, so again, working backwards to this stuff, but like learning Tkinter, learning Python, learning SQL, uh, I didn't even know I would need to know that ahead of time. I just kind of, you, you're coming from working backwards. Um, that's how I learned it. And then, um, you know, at, at a certain point, you know Python well enough, you know SQL well enough, and you know Tkinter well enough to create a little Python executable file that uh, is something where people on a Windows laptop, someone in the field, a customer service rep in the field, is able to just run this little executable file and they're able to analyze a log file in a couple of seconds that would have taken us, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes to do by hand or, or by eye, uh, you know, earlier. And now you've got a working minimum viable product that you can put into people's hands. And um, that's really how I started, you know? Uh, and so, all these people on YouTube, like Corey Schaefer and Code Academy, and um, you know, just I, there's too many to note, and I'm, I'm, you know, but there's tons of people out there who have great public resources on these things um, that are available to you, especially with open sourced applications where you can you can learn SQL and Python and uh, Tkinter and other things to to make your idea kind of become a, a concrete product that you can deliver to people, and then from there getting buy-in from your your manager and your director to show them like you know this is how much time it saves us every single time we run this file and, and going on a little bit of a marketing campaign to show like you know here's how much time we save and here's how much you spend on a customer service rep per year so if we're saving you know 700 hours a month that's a lot of money um so that gets you more resources to put into your project that gets you um some developers maybe or, or you know just just it gets you on the radar of, of the people. And, and from there, you can kind of, like in my case, what happened from then was just saying like, okay, so we've got this product. We want to scale it up. How are we going to scale it up? How do we make it more accessible to our users? How do we make it easier to use for users? Um, and in my case, that meant let's put this into a web application that could be accessed from anywhere. You wouldn't even need to be on VPN to access it. So that's where I was like, okay, well, 
let's see what we can do with Flask and just watch Corey Schaefer's video playlist on Flask. All of it's free and public. Um, and also saying, okay, well, IT is going to want us to have a secure website. So how are we going to integrate Microsoft authentication into this thing? So, you know, watching more videos, asking more people, uh, just, you know, doing whatever it takes to, to get that missing part of your product or service into a thing. And, and, and that's how I did it, you know, and, uh, it, looking back on it, you know, if I was starting from scratch nowadays, I would say, let's just go straight to flask and, um, you know, and, and let's create some API calls and let's figure out how to make this thing, uh, on a serverless infrastructure and like all these other things it was just like, that's, that would have never occurred to me, uh, at that early point. And I'm totally okay with that. It's like, that's just how you learn is you, you take the really long path and then you eventually realize like, okay, I could have taken a shorter path, but you wouldn't know. And, and you really kind of have to do that. And, um, that's all part of the journey and part of the learning experience here. And, um, you know, the, the, the key thing to hit home and all this stuff is just that you have to really know exactly what it is you want to do. And in my case, I knew I wanted to create a log file analyzer because I thought we were spending way too much time looking at this file that we could have easily had a, a program programmatically, you know, search and, and tell us what's wrong in it. Um, and I just knew it could be done. I, I knew that it would improve our customer's experience, both internally with my coworkers and externally with the people who are actually buying our, our company's products. And so, um, you know, that's, that's how I became a software engineer. And um, when you interview at a place like Amazon or, you know, these other big tech companies, they really like to hear these types of stories where, you know, you, you taught yourself what you needed to know to get this job done. Because, you know, for a long time, I felt like the only way you become a software engineer is if you majored in computer science in college. At least that's the way my brain kept telling me, like, you know, you can't do this. It's beyond your level, all these other things. Um, and it's not true. Like, even software engineers who go to big name universities and, and do really awesome internships as their undergrads or have masters or, or PhDs, they still have to learn on the job. Like that's always going to be a part of your work is learning this new stack that you have no idea. Any, you know, I don't know anything about React or JavaScript or whatever, but it's like that's the language that your team's using right now, so you have to know it. And so, yeah, you didn't learn this in college. They never taught you this in college. But what, you know, in my case, as a chemical engineer, what they taught in college was how to approach these things when you don't know anything, you know, so it's just kind of like, use Google to your full advantage, use YouTube to your full advantage. Um, and just, you know, in my case, I find having a, a pen with me and just writing down like a, a design of, of the application that I would like to have and identifying any holes in it where I'm like, I have no idea how a database works. I don't know what type of database I should go with here. Or, you know, I don't know anything about the front end. Uh, I, I don't know anything about Vue or React. I don't know anything about single page applications. Like just identifying where are your weaknesses and then spending your time focused on learning that stuff is, is how I approach it. Um, and I would, I think it's a good strategy. That's why I do it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's really uh, how I would advise other people who want to do this path if it's something that interests you is that it's like, 100% this is something you can do. You just have to be focused and organized and believe in yourself. And I honestly believe you can do it too. Like it's it's going to be a lot of work. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. There's going to be a lot of late nights. And just like in my case, even when I'm not behind my desk, you know, typing or anything, I'll go on a bike ride or I'll go on a walk. And, you know, my brain is still thinking about stuff that's happened. And I'll think of different ways of architecting something or different ways of coding something. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to carry like a, a, my phone or something with me so I can just write it down really quickly before I forget it. Like, you know, try it this way or, or maybe try it some different thing. But, um, you know, it's really good to also just take breaks and not burn out because I think the fastest thing you can do is just, just sit there and think that if you just spend another eight hours staring at your screen when you're stuck on something, it's going to somehow come to you and it, it won't. Um, so just, I guess figure out how to incorporate that into your life of just being okay when things are not going the way you would want them to be. And just knowing that this is all a learning opportunity and thinking about, you know, what other ways could you do this thing? Like what is really the business value of this product you're trying to make? You know, how do you deliver the value to your customers? And can you think of a different way to, to, to deliver this value 
uh, that might not require something that you don't already know. Like the easiest thing you can do is to use tools you already know. So ideally when you're at a good place, that's what you would do. But um, yeah, so that's my story. That's also my advice in terms of how to kind of jump ship from, from a different discipline into software engineering. Um, but I, I hope this stuff is helpful for you guys uh, and girls out there. Um, thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.